Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back here to another edition of Intuitive Angling. And man, I really appreciate you guys uh, carving some time out of your day to check the video out. It's always much appreciated. And guys, today we're going to discuss uh, MLF's decision or announcement yesterday that they've got some major format changes on the Bass Pro uh, Tour out there. Uh, this has created a tremendous amount of outrage amongst a lot of anglers out there. So we're going to get into that in today's video. Um, real quick guys, before we get into it, just wanted to invite everybody out there. If you haven't had a chance to please consider becoming a channel member here of Intuitive Angling. And with uh, channel memberships, you get extra videos that aren't seen by the public every week and some access to my personal email address for your fishing questions. And if you're interested, just go to the uh, my YouTube homepage, click on that little join button. It gives you the information That's uh, to do that. It's a good way to support the channel here. So appreciate it. Okay guys, in a nutshell, uh, uh, Bass Pro Tour, MLF announced yesterday some, some significant changes uh, moving forward next year. The first thing that's gonna happen, and there's been several pros have done videos on this. I was sort of late to the party on it uh, because it was such big breaking news. The first thing they're gonna do is they're cutting a million dollars out of the payout. They're basically, um, I think it was last year, the Bass Pro Two Wranglers, every one of them got paid. If you if you finish last place in the tournament, you got almost your entry fee back. And now I think they said they're, they've cut the payback uh, almost half on there as far I'm not sure the the, the, the uh, amount on there but anyway I think it's something like 41st through 80th instead of getting their entry fee back they're not going to get anything and that's a significant um, blow to the anglers because now um, instead of like if before it's like if even if you finish last place in every tournament you were still only going going to, you were still only going to lose about 10 10 or twelve thousand dollars out of the season as far as the entry fees because i think the entry fees are forty thousand dollars but now you know you could you could you lose forty thousand dollars if you didn't make the top 40 in those tournaments so that's a big deal to those anglers and then they announce some restructuring as far as the requalification for 2025 they're going to cut the field down to 50 out of 80 and they're going to take i think it's the top 35 from the all-time angler of the year points on the Bass Pro Tour, and then they're going to take the rest from uh, Tackle Warehouse and from the uh, Angler of the Year standings from the 2024 season, which sort of screws a bunch of guys. It's going to screw a lot of the rookies that come in, and nobody's happy about it. It's just like, if you're a Bass Pro Tour member, you got, there's probably a bunch of them that's got some tremendous buyer's remorse that have came over from the Elite Series. And I want to take a second to sort of comment on this whole MLF deal, give, give you my opinion on it. Um, I've been pretty critical about it, and I think for good reason. I want to sort of, I want to explain to what the deal is here with it, why I've been critical with it, and why I think it really hadn't been a very good thing for the sport. Um, first of all, when they created the Bass Pro Tour out there, it really fractured the sport of bass fishing. It's like nobody wanted to see Kevin Van Dam move from Bassmaster. Kevin was the face of Bassmaster to some new tournament organization. There was a tremendous amount of instability that was created by that. Not just Van Dam, but a ton of the Elite Series pros. They all had this big carrot dangled under their nose as far as this new, you know, lucrative future with this new tournament circuit. And in my opinion, a lot of those guys, they just threw Bassmaster under the bus. They Bassmaster made the careers of those guys. They basically threw them under the bus for some new business adventure. And in the the result of that, like I said, was a fracturing of the sport, sort of like what you're seeing with Live Golf and the PGA now. It's not good for anything out there. It's a, it really destabilized the industry. And it made it tougher for everybody out there. And then on top of that, the thing that really irritated a lot of anglers is that when they decided to break away and form their own organization, when they first started that uh, first year, there was no qualification to be in the Bass Pro Tour. It's like they basically pick, handpicked who they wanted to from just a hodgepodge of anglers out there. They didn't give any type of transparency whatsoever on how to qualify because there wasn't any qualifications. And right off the bat, that got a bad taste in everybody's mouth because there was like a, 
there was some, it was, there was an injustice there. There was a lot of people that should have got the invitation that didn't. A lot of people that got the invitation that shouldn't have. Sort of like a, you know, there was like a, I don't know, it's, it's, it's some, some nepotism involved to some extent. But anyway, that was a bad deal. But one of the things that has really undermined the, the, the success, I think, of the Bass Pro Tour since it started is they've been all over the place. Guys, I follow fishing and I can't keep up with them. There have been so many format changes and rule changes and switching around and, you know, they switching rules and switching qualification criteria in the mid season that it's just, it's just nobody can keep up with it. I don't even know how that organization operates as far as how their tournaments even function because it changes all the time. And I think a lot of people, most people have just got, you know, they got tired of having to keep up with it. The, the interest wasn't there. So in a large degree, that's why you've seen a lot of def the deflections. There's been a lot of people that have quit the Bass Pro Tour and that, you know, crawl back to Bassmaster after throwing Bassmaster under the bus. Very, very common out there. And I think there's a lot of people out there that wish they hadn't gotten involved with that, wish MLF hadn't even come up with the Bass Pro Tour and wish just we had the Bassmaster Elite Series, Top 150s, whatever it was. You know, the world was a much easier, simple place under that, under those situations. So, you know, from that standpoint, you know, what does it, you know, what does it do to the sport? This entire thing, and one of the reasons, and this is, I'm theorizing, I don't, I don't know the details of it, but I don't really see a lot of other options on that. When you have a million dollar payout cut to me that reflects difficulty in acquiring and securing sponsorships and the reality of the situation guys the reason why mlf and bassmaster and all tournament organizations struggle anymore to maintain and sustain sponsorships is the world of the the, the advertising and marketing world of professional fishing has changed with the advent of social media and there is no, there's not, there's ne not anywhere near the value for an advertiser to put money into Bassmaster or to MLF from the amount of return and impressions they get from that advert, from their avenues based upon, or in comparison to like social media influencers. Guys, social media influencers are more powerful. They're a more powerful vehicle to create brand awareness and impressions than any avenues created by tournament organizations because you can take you can take a bass fishing a 25 year old bass fishing youtuber with a big following can literally put a product in front of more eyes than Bassmaster television show could or mlf because number one there's a bigger following and more importantly it's evergreen content this once this content is uploaded to a YouTube site, it's always there. People can always go back to it. So from that standpoint, it's like it, it's, it's a terrible business investment for a company to throw hundreds of thousands of dollars into the Bass Pro Tour or into the Bassmaster Elite Series or whatever, when they can get more bang for their buck out of a social media influencer. And this is, this is, this is what they're starting to see right now. This is what Bassmaster and MLF are starting to uh, see the reality of. And uh, it's it's just the way it is. I mean, that's why it doesn't make any difference how good of a tournament angler you are anymore. Guys, you can win, you could win the Bassmaster Classic for five years in a row, or you could win whatever the MLF championship is, the Red Crest, I can't remember. You could win that for, for five years in a row. And that angler that won the Bassmaster Classic for five years in the row, row is not as valuable as some, again, some 25 or 30 year old bass fishing YouTuber that has a big social media following. That's the reality of the situation that the injury, that the, the advertising part of this industry and the marketing part of this industry has changed. It's completely different. And a lot of those people are late to the party in the fact that they don't realize that and they make these bad business investments. They invest in these tournament organizations and they simply don't see a return on their investment. And then it sours them and they don't want to be part of that anymore. And then you have dropping payouts and then people are all, then 
people are back reeling and they're trying to make adjustments to try to gain excitement back in the tournaments. And as a result, you know, it just doesn't work out. And I think that in my opinion, MLF, Bass Pro Tour out there, it's an example of how as the sport continues to get more watered down with more anglers and more tournament circuits and more options out there, it makes it harder for everybody to make a living. It makes it harder for the tournament organizations to be successful because there's a limited amount of income, I mean, in, in, limited amount of advertising dollars that can be put around. It makes it more difficult for the anglers to secure sponsorships because you can't stand out anymore. It, got, it doesn't make any difference, guys. I don't care how good you are as a professional angler, you simply can't stand out like you could 25 years ago when there wasn't as many tournaments. That's a sad reality about it. And a lot of people get, when I talk about that and I try to explain people, and a lot of times I try to discourage them from really getting too excited about making a living as a pro angler, because it's tougher now than it's ever been simply because there's so many anglers out there and nobody nobody can excel simply another reason with that in the age of forward-facing sonar in the age of forward-facing sonar you have so many people out there that have zero name recognition that are coming to the forefront all the time and when you have that over and over again nobody cares you know nobody can stand out and nobody becomes a any type of a marketing powerhouse from a tournament aspect, the marketing powerhouses are the people that are the social media influencers, you know, primarily YouTube, to some extent, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, but primarily YouTube. So in essence, the tournament organizations have sort of created this problem. A lot of the people that, um, the, the, the entire, you know, the way that our country works as far as, you know, the free markets, you know, the free market capitalism and you know, competition and all that type of stuff to a large degree is responsible for how difficult it is for tournament organizations and, and uh, anglers to make a, a, a good living simply through the tournaments like they could 25 years ago. And it's not going to get any better. Guys, I think one of the things that MLF Bassmaster is going to have to realize is they're going to have to deal with the age of social media. And their entire, their entire business models are going to have to change. And I think this whole thing about MLF cutting a million dollars out of the payout is just a prime example of that. So anyway, I, like I said, I, I don't, it's, it's, it's like, I understand why somebody wants to try to build a better mousetrap. I think, I know that's what they were trying to do with the Bass Pro Tour out there, but in light, after we've seen it unfold over the past five or six years i don't think it's been a good thing for the sport i don't see anything positive that has come from it whether you know whether it be from a tournament side of the tournament organization side or an angler perspective out there it's sort of been like a, a mm. bummer all the way around with that anyway guys that's my two cents on the thing out there i'm not i think like I said, a lot of guys that are fishing the Bass Pro Tour. I think they have a tremendous amount of buyer's remorse right now. And um, that's just the reality of the situation. So anyway, thanks for checking in. We'll talk later.